Okay, so let's start. So we will be, uh, so we are going to start with our next uh, session basically. So previously we have been talking about the regulation of uh, gene expression at uh, generally at a pre-transcription level or at a transcription level, both of them. Uh, pre-transcription level was at the, uh, like at the chromatin remodeling uh, st uh, stage. And then we also talked about the transcription level. We talked about the enhanced, enhanced regions. We talked about the promoter regions and all these things. And now we are going to talk, up, uh, talk about the post-transcriptional gene control. We have previously discussed that uh, genes can be regulated starting all the way from, uh, from chromatin remodeling and then transcriptional control and then post-transcriptional control and then translational control and then post-translational control. So all of uh, the expression of the genes can be controlled at all this, these uh, different stages. So we have discussed in quite some details about the pre-transcriptional stage the transcript and the transcriptional stages. So today we are going to talk about the post-transcriptional gene control. And the first thing uh, we would talk about is the RNA, uh, RNA processing, especially in the eukaryotic mRNAs, because it is not, uh, it is generally uh, done in, uh, eukaryotic uh, organisms and not in uh, prokaryotic organisms. So there the mRNA does not need to be processed. So as soon as the, it is transcribed, it can get translated. So these post-transcriptional modifications, they're generally uh, a part of the eukaryotic mRNA processing. So what you see here on the slide, we have this general structure of an mRNA molecule. So this is the five prime end and this is the three prime end. Next to this five prime end, we have a specific region at basically at both the ends, at the five prime end and at the three prime end, what we call five prime UTR and three prime UTR. So UTR stands for the untranslated region. It means this is the region that would be transcribed. This would be a part of the mRNA molecule, but it would not get translated. So it means transcription starts from here and translation starts within the mRNA molecule. So the length of the uh, protein coding sequence is much smaller than the entire length of the mRNA molecule. So this is basically the transcription start site and this is the translation start site. So these two sites are um, different from each other. The translation start sites and translation stop site, both of them fall or lie within the mRNA molecule. So in the middle, we have this protein coding sequence. So this is general, uh, structure of a mature mRNA molecule. But in order to get to this stage, the mRNA molecule needs to get uh, processed first, especially in case of eukaryotic mRNA molecules. So in uh, eukaryotes, the, this processing of, of, the, of this primary transcript, generally it's, it's core transcriptional. It means as soon as, for example, if you have the DNA here at the top, and this is the molecule that is being uh, transcribed, the mRNA molecule. So as soon as the, it, it starts coming out at the five prime end, the processing uh, starts uh, along with the transcriptional process. It's not like the entire mRNA molecule is first transcribed and then dissociated from the RNA polymerase and general transcription factors and from the DNA. And then the post transcriptional modifications would take place. No, it's not like this as soon as the five prime end comes out of the transcriptional complex. This is the DNA, for example, and this is the uh, primary transcript. So as soon as the five prime uh, end comes out of this uh, transcriptional complex, which was, for example, bound here on the DNA, so as soon as it appears outside, capping and post-transcriptional modifications, other post-transcriptional modifications, which include uh, three prime polyadenylation and, and transplicing, so this, among them, five prime capping is the first thing that would immediately take place. So that's why it says at stage one, trans, after transcription, this is five prime capping. So this is the first processing that takes place on the, uh, or first modification that takes place uh, on the mRNA molecule in eukaryotes. Because as soon as the five prime end of the mRNA molecule is transcribed from the and uh, comes out of the transcriptional complex, this is immediately modified because the mRNA molecule is a very delicate molecule. 
and uh, uh, amon is a very delicate delicate molecule and it needs uh, immediate stabilization so five prime capping is done immediately and then the second thing you are well aware, aware of is the polyadenylation so polyadenylation takes place generally at the end so that's the last thing that takes place while intron splicing can take place uh, in the middle so first thing is five prime capping and then there's also one other thing that is uh, uh, we have a poly a site in the mrna in, in, in the dna uh, molecule so poly a site is the uh, basically the sequence where poly a tail is attached so these two modifications a uh, modification there's uh, there's capping at the five prime end and there's uh, addition of a tail at the three prime end so this is what we call capping and this is what we call polyadenylation and the third modification is in transplicing which takes place in the middle so this is on the dna we have this exon regions the red ones and the blue ones these are the intron regions so we uh, know pretty well that the introns need to be removed and the exons are needed to be joined together what we call intron splicing so splicing does not mean cutting splicing means putting the two ends together joining the two ends together so generally students have this uh, concept in mind that splicing means uh, cleavage or cutting off of the uh, or removal of these uh, intron uh, molecules. It's not removal. It's basically splicing means when you put the two ends together, when you take this exon and you uh, put together this, this exon with the, with the other exon, that's what we call splicing, putting the two ends together. So in order to put these two ends together, in order to unite the exons, we need to remove the introns. So this also takes place here. So the first thing is transcript after transcription is five prime capping. And then endonucleases come into play. What they would do, they would cleave the poly A site. Here, the mRNA molecule is cleaved so that poly A tail can be attached. We will study them in details uh, later. And then another molecule, what we call another enzyme, what is known as poly A polymerase or PAP, with the utilization of ATP molecules that would carry out the uh, polyadenylation. So, and then at the fourth stage, the final stage, this is the RNA splicing that would take place. And the pre-mRNA or the primary transcript would be converted into a mature, mature mRNA molecule. And this entire process, all these things, the capping at the, at the five prime end, polyadenylation at, at the three prime end, and intron splicing, all of them take place inside the nucleus. So the, only the mature mRNA molecules would be carried out into the cytoplasm. So all these processes, these post-transcriptional modifications, they are going to take place inside the nucleus. And then later, this transcript, this mature transcript would be uh, pulled out of the nuclear pores in, from the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Clear to everyone? Any questions so far? Clear, yes, sir. Clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir, clear. Okay, so that was a, a general overview. I think you are uh, well aware of these basic things. Uh, so we would uh, study these things one by one. We would talk about capping. We would talk about uh, polyadenylation, and we will talk about the RNA splicing process. So we will go through these steps one by one, how, they, how these things take, take place. So let's talk about this first thing. Sir, did you? Sir, so you have interrupted me. Sir, sir, you are saying that it is not in your class. It is not connected to your class. It is wrong password or this way. नहीं देखें तो उसके एंड पर कोई प्रॉब्लम है ना सादे के एंड पर जी से मैं इनसे कहा कि हम सब क्योंकि अगर उसका क्यों इशू है क्योंकि बाकी सारे लोग अगर वो कर सकते हैं कनेक्ट कर हो सकते हैं तो आई थिंक देस समथिंग रॉंग एट हर एंड वो अपना खुद का चेक कर ले जी से ठीक देखें आई थिंक यू यू कैन लुक एट इट ऑल ऑफ � I mean, I can see this regularly. Who doesn't come? Who comes? These regular students come in daily. I see them who come online. Others don't come. So, anyways, this is. I think this is not an issue with the password. It's rather there's something wrong with her internet connection, or maybe. So, sir, उन्हें कहते हैं कि link के through अगर वो connect हो जाएं अगर password और वो id ना दें तो link के through तो connect हो सकते हैं. जी, मैंने कहा. Link के through भी connect हो सकते हैं. आप id और password के through भी connect हो सकते हैं. Yes, sir. If you have a password, you can get a link through. Sir, I said that your internet is an issue when you don't connect. Yes, maybe you don't connect. Okay, 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. So anyways, uh, let's proceed further. So first thing we are going to talk about today is uh, the first modification that is obviously capping. So capping is basically, it's, it's nothing else but addition of uh, a guanine nucleotide at the five prime end. But this is a special type of guanine nucleotide. And this is also added in a special way. And the purpose basically is to protect this five prime end from the exonucleases so that they cannot attack the mRNA molecule from this end. So, because the, the, the mRNA molecules can be attacked both by exonucleases and endonucleases. And we know that the exonucleases can attack either from the five prime end or from the three prime end and start chopping off the mRNA molecule and they can degrade it, or they can also attack somewhere in the middle. So in order to protect the, uh, the mRNA molecule, we need to carry out lots of modifications, both at the five prime end and at the three prime end, as well as on the mRNA molecule. So generally the mRNA molecules, when they are found inside the nucleus, we do not call them the mRNA molecules, they're rather known as mRNPs, uh, ribonuclear proteins. So uh, the ribonuclear proteins, basically this is, the, uh, this is a combination of an RNA molecule plus the associated proteins. So lots of different proteins would be added onto this cap at the five prime end and to the three prime tail, and they would also surround the mRNA molecule. So there would, you would find multiple proteins that are bound uh, onto the mRNA molecule and all of these proteins that are bound to this mRNA molecule convert this uh, in uh, this 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 uh, complex into mRNP and they have different functions um, those that at the five prime end they also protect the mRNA molecule and they also help the mRNA molecule in uh, pulling it out of the nucleus through the nuclear pore so certain proteins need to be attached onto the five prime end so that they can pull it out of the nuclear pore into the cytoplasm. And there are uh, others which are, are also bound on, bound on the, uh, which are attached to the mRNA molecule, which prevent it from the attack from the, from the, from the endonucleases. And those bound at the five prime end, they also, uh, it, they not only help in, uh, in, in um, uh, uh, removal of the mRNA molecule from the nucleus into the cytoplasm, they also help in, in, in initiation of translation. So these different proteins that are associated with this mRNA molecule, they have different functions. So uh, the first thing we need to do here is to modify the five prime end because this capping also plays a role in the association of proteins at the five prime end. If there's no cap at the five prime end, perhaps those proteins which are involved in uh, transportation of the mRNA molecule from the nucleus into the cytoplasm may not work. They, they may not get associated with this uh, with this mRNA molecule. So how does this capping take place? So this is your, uh, this is your mRNA molecule or pre-mRNA. So only the ribose sugars are shown here, not the nucleotides. But anyways, let's assume that they're, they're also nucleotides. And so this is, the, uh, this, is, this is the first nucleotide and this is the second nucleotide. So this is the three prime end. Yeah, so this is the three prime end. This is the fourth and this is the fifth carbon. So this is the three prime end and this is the five prime end. So base one, two, three, four. So uh, here at the five prime end, what we uh, see that uh, there are three phosphate molecules. Generally, each nucleotide that is added onto the uh, onto this uh, onto the RNA molecule or onto any other uh, uh, RNA molecules that are being transcribed. So generally, they are added in a three prime, five prime uh, setup. So three prime carbon of one uh, uh, nucleotide is attached to the uh, five prime carbon of the other one via their uh, ribose sugars. But in this case, here we have another nucleotide that is basically a guanosine, but we call it a seven methyl guanylate or seven methyl guanosine. And the reason why we uh, call it so is because the seven, this is methylated at seventh position. It's a simple guanosine, but it is methylated. So uh, this is what makes it specialized. It is uh, associated with a normal uh, ribose sugar. But the important thing is its linkage with the mRNA molecule. So rather than having a uh, five prime, three prime setup, so basically generally what happens that this, uh, there should be a, a, a phosphate bond, between, a single phosphate bond between the five prime, uh, 
between the fifth carbon and the third carbon of the next nucleotide. But here, rather than making a bond with a single phosphate, with the uh, third carbon of the incoming nucleotide, newly added nucleotide, a link is established rather with the fifth carbon. This is what establishes a five prime, five prime linkage. It's not a five prime, three prime linkage. It's rather a five prime, five prime linkage. So uh, this basically gives a protection to the five prime end of the uh, pre-mRNA that it cannot be cleaved by the by the uh, by the exonucleases and it also helps in association of the other proteins to the five prime end. And in addition to that, the uh, the the uh, the ribose residues of the first two nucleotides they may also be methylated at the uh, at, at, at the two hydroxyl group at the second carbon. So this is a hydroxyl group. Generally, generally this is a hydroxyl group. Uh, in a normal nucleotide, this is how it looks like. But um, when modification takes place, uh, along with capping the first two nucleotides of your primary transcript of the mRNA molecule, they can also get methylated at the second carbon. So this hydroxyl group basically gets methylated. So generally, there are three methylations, one at the uh, newly added nucleotide, the additional nucleotide, which is added at the five prime end, I told you on the previous slide that this is uh, nothing different, but this is a simple guanosine. The only difference here is that this is methylated at the, uh, at the seventh uh, position. So, and the second thing important here is that this is a five prime, prime, five prime linkage rather than a five prime, three prime linkage, which generally uh, is the case with the rest of the nucleotides in the primary transcript. So all of them are connected. If you move downwards here towards the, uh, five prime end. This would always be a three prime, five prime, three prime, five prime, three prime, five prime. Three prime end of one nucleotide would be connected to the five prime end of the other nucleotide via a phosphate bond. This is what we call a. Uh, of, uh, this is what we call a five prime, three prime linkage. But in case of capping, uh, there are two things different: that the newly added guanosine is methylated, and we call it seven methyl guanosine or seven methyl guanylate. And the second thing that this is a five prime, five prime linkage. This is the second thing. Third thing we have, it's rather than a single phosphate bond, it's a triphosphate bond. There are three phosphate molecules. And the fourth modification we have here, that the, uh, that, that the uh, uh, two prime hydroxyl groups of these, uh, the first two uh, nucleotides are they, are, they are also methylated. So all these modifications would take place uh, for capping. We uh, would look at them uh, in details. How does this thing take place? How they are added in such a in, in, in such a fashion, and what are the different enzymes that are associated with the uh, with this uh, processing? So, uh, clear to everyone till here, or there are any questions? No, oh, sir, clear. I think it's it is very clear. clear. The only thing important thing here is that you have to uh, remember that rather than a five prime three prime linkage, it's a five prime five prime linkage. Rather than getting associated with this carbon, it gets attached with this carbon, and then there are three phosphate molecules. This is a simple thing: addition of a methyl group to any of the bases. So this is possible. Different enzymes can can do it. So uh, let's proceed further. Uh, let's look uh, at the details. How this uh, this this uh, seven methyl guanylate is attached, basically. So this is our pre-mRNA, and we know that the uh, Newly added nucleotides are they are I mean we also use the term DNDPs for example uh, they are triphosphate molecules so uh, it means that the nucleotides when they're added they contain three uh, phosphate molecules the first one closer to the carbon this is uh, this is the alpha phosphate group and then the beta and then the gamma so if you proceed from so if if, if let let's assume this is not added yet this is not added yet but you would have at the uh, five prime end would be a, a alpha, beta, and gamma, a triphosphate molecule. So this is your primary transcript that what, what we are looking at at the next slide. And this is yet to be added, the one shown in blue. This is not yet added. What we have on the next slide, I would switch over to it in a moment. So what we have on the next slide is starting from here. So this is your uh, first nucleotide. Uh, at the five prime end, because we take it off, we, we regularly uh, take the sequences from five prime towards three prime end. So at the five prime end, 
We have uh, the alpha, beta, and gamma-3 phosphate molecules. So that's what we have here. This is our pre-mRNA, and this is the 5 prime end. And at the 5 prime end, we have these three phosphate molecules, alpha, beta, and gamma. And these phosphate molecules are the phosphate molecules of the first uh, nucleotide, which is at the 5 prime end here. So the first thing that happens is that a phosphohydrolase molecule, uh, uh, sorry, a phosphohydrolase enzyme, uh, it kicks out the gamma phosphate group, the last one. This one is kicked out. This is removed from this nucleotide. So this nucleotide contained three phosphate molecules. Alpha, beta are left over there. They are left attached with this first nucleotide, but gamma is removed. And this is removed by phosphohydrolase. So gamma is removed and we are left with alpha and beta. After we are left with alpha and beta, now a GTP, guanosine triphosphate, a normal, it's not yet methylated. It's a simple guanosine, which again, in the same fashion, we, we, we know that from the five prime end, at the, uh, at the five prime end, they contain three phosphate, phosphate molecules, alpha, beta, and gamma. Now switch back to the, let's switch back to the previous slide. Let's assume that this is the newly added nucleotide and we consider it till here. So at the five prime end, it contains alpha, beta, and gamma. The same way, like first nucleotide contained three phosphate molecules at this five prime end and we call them alpha, beta, and gamma. Now in this case, because they're associated at the, uh, at the five prime end, we, we would call it, this one would be called as alpha and this is beta and this is gamma. So this is to be this uh, molecule is to be attached to the first nucleotide. So this gets attached to it and now we have five phosphate groups. If you look at on this slide, then two leftovers from this nucleotide and three phosphate groups which were associated with the salmon methyl guanylate or with the incoming newly added uh, guanosine molecule. So three from the guanosine and these two from the first nucleotide of the pre-mRNA because gamma has already been removed. So in total, we have, uh, in, in total, this is a five prime, five prime linkage, but we have five phosphate groups uh, associated here. So what happens then, these two, beta and gamma, they need to be removed from the GTP. And this alpha would be left there. So another enzyme, what we call gonadal transferase, this will kick out the other two uh, beta and gamma phosphate groups. And now we are left with the pre-mRNA where the first two phosphate groups are from the, uh, from the uh, five prime nucleotide of the pre-mRNA and the newly added guanosine is attached with them with the single phosphate. So if I switch back to the previous slide, then here among these three phosphates, these two nucleotides are the ones which, are as, which were associated with this nucleotide and this single phosphate this is the alpha phosphate of the uh, of the guanosine which is now associated with it now we have established a five prime five prime linkage and the second thing we, and we have also uh, three phosphate molecules now we have three phosphate molecules one from guanosine and two of them from the first nucleotide which was at the five prime end of the pre mrna now what we need to do we need to methylate uh, the we need to methylate the guanosine. We need to methylate the and we also need to methylate the first two residues of the pre mRNA. The first two nucleotides also need to be methylated at the two prime hydroxyl uh, group. So in order to do this, we would first need um, an enzyme guanine seven methyl transferase. So basically, what it does, as the name indicates, guanine means it is going to methylate guanine. Salmon is the from the position, salmon's position on the ring. So uh, methyl methyl transferase, as the name indicates, it means it is going to transfer methyl group from another molecule onto guanine. And the other molecule that is used for transfer is the uh, S adenosyl methionine. So your nucleus contains these molecules, these S adenosyl methionines, and they work as donors of methyl group. So methyl group is taken from S adenosyl methionine. I have added the abbreviation here. So here it is written, S adenosyl methionine. So uh, 
the methyl group is uh, taken from as adenosyl methionine and transferred onto the seventh position on this uh, guanine molecule, which converts it into seven methyl guanylate. Now we are done with it. So this job is done by the seven methyl guan uh, by the seven methyl uh, sorry guanine seven methyl transferase. And the second thing now we need to do is we need to methylate these two nucleotides at the uh, two prime position. So for this, we need a two prime O methyl transferase, which would again also take methyl group from S adenosyl methionine and will add it onto these two. So here, an M means that this nucleotide has been methylated. So for this would take a uh, this enzyme would take a methyl group from S adenosyl methionine and will add it on to the first two nucleotides at the two prime position. So this is how capping is completed. So we have added a seven methyl guanylate uh, to the first nucleotide in a five prime, five prime fashion. And this is a triphosphate uh, linkage rather than a monophosphate linkage, which is common between the two nucleotides, both in the DNA and in the RNA. So this is special, special about it. And this methylated, this is special about it. And uh, so methylation, five prime, five prime linkage, triphosphate uh, linkage, and then the first two nucleotides are methylated. So basically these are four uh, particular modifications which make it different from the rest of the nucleotides. So this five prime end is now different from the regular five prime end because of these four things. A methyl group at the seventh position on the gonadine, a triphosphate uh, linkage, a five prime, five prime fashion, and the two nucleotides are now methylated. This completes the setup of the capping. And this is what protects the mRNA molecule against lots of different enzymes, which would otherwise degrade the uh, RNA molecule uh, at the five prime end, even if, you are, even if these are your own uh, exonucleases. So this is the region. mRNA is a very delicate structure and it needs extensive stabilization. Otherwise it can immediately be degraded because there are lots of uh, exonucleases and endonucleases and the primary job basically is there to for them this is they also work as the defense mechanism for the for the for the cells because whenever our cells are infected with the rna viruses these rnases they help us uh, get rid of this virus by degrading its uh, rna molecules so this is the reason our own this is the reason our own rna molecules are also uh, very delicate and they need to be protected. And this is how they are protected. So we will talk about uh, polyadenylation and, uh, and, uh, and uh, intron splicing in our next lectures, one by one. I think in one lecture, we will talk about polyadenylation and intron splicing may take two lectures. This is a little longer, but I think that is sufficient for today. So if there are any questions, please. Sir, ये तो टॉपिक क्लियर है सर मेरी लास्ट लेक्चर से कंसर्न क्वेश्चंस वहां पे होल क्लास रूम पे पोस्ट किए थे आप आपने शायद देख फिर अगर उसका आंसर आप कर दें तो आई वुड डेफिनेटली आंसर टू दोस क्वेश्चंस सो आई जनरली डू इट व्हेन आई अपलोड द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर सो बिकॉज़ आई हैव नॉट येट अपलोडेड इट आई हैव आई टोल्ड यू टुडे एज़ वेल दैट आई वाज हैविंग सम इश्यूज विद माय इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी सो I would upload these lectures today, both of them, hopefully, uh, the one from the yest from yesterday and the one we have today, and then I would also answer to those questions. So I generally do it when I upload the new lectures. So don't worry yes, about it; you will get the answers to your questions. So if there are any questions related to today's topic, please. Sir, no, sir. Clear. No, clear, sir. To, clear to everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Clear. Yes, sir. Okay, Aksa and Sundas. I'm not sure if they're there. <laughs> so I think uh, that's it. If there are no questions, we can wind up the session. Thank you very much for your yes, participation. Sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.